empezar. So um, it's the final program of the day. And we're still here, even under the, uh, with rain, the heavy rain that, you know, freezes LA and just puts everyone at a halt. So we've made it to our final um, program of the day for this special edition of the Artist Lab in the studio. Members of Consejo Grafico Nacional will join us to talk about their print studios and their practice. A conversation will be led by Sandra Fernandez, Executive Director of the Consejo. We will follow, um, we will follow with a discussion of the collective's history and vital role in the context of Latino Latinx printmaking and their most recent portfolio, Perro Mundo, completed in 2019. The Consejo Gráfico Nacional is an independent coalition of printmaking workshops or talleres formed to advance the capacity and legacy of Latino printmakers, inclusive of all Americas in the United States. Through a combination of collaborative projects, exhibitions, educational outreach, and conferences, the Consejo promotes the continuity of critical and cultural activism in contemporary art. Members and their respective talleres include Rene Arceo from Arceo Press, Pepe Coronado from Coronado Print Studios and also representing, if I'm correct, Serie, Serie Project. Melanie Cervantes from Dignidad Rebelde. Mariana Sadowski from Monográfico Col Colectivo. Francesco Siqueros from El, Nop El Nopal Press. Poli Marichal from Poli Marichal Print Studios. Ramiro Rodriguez from Rio Mar Studios. Our moderator, Sandra Fernandez from S. Fernandez Press and Taller. Betty Avila, Executive Director of South Up Graphics and Art. And Nitza Tufino, Tufino from Taller Borricua. And uh, Jose Arenas from Taná, Taller Arte del Nuevo Amanecer. Pajaro Editions, based in San Francisco, could not join us today. Sandra? Bienvenidos a todos. Hello there. Hello, can you hear me? Great. Um, Marbella, I have asked you to uh, that I would you that I would uh, share my screen, but I'm having a little bit of a problem right now of sharing my screen. Could uh, Okay, um, did you share your PowerPoint or you can email us your PowerPoint? Uh, yes, I, I already sent it to Lulu. Okay. And I'll ask her, I think she should be sharing it. Let me see. A ver. Sandra, can you share it with me just in case um, Lulu can access it? Uh, to your email. Ahí está. Ahí está, Sandra. Oh, perfecto. Eh, Lulu lo está haciendo, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. The first um, image is mirrored. Yeah, just play it. Ok. Uh, if she can just do image by image, that'll be wonderful. You want to, um, would you like her to, um, you ch for her to change it uh, when you tell yes. her? Okay. Yes. I, I would just say, I would just say next. Next, next slide. slide. 
Perfect. Thank you. She can go ahead and uh, go back one slide, please. And she can start there. She can play it. Go ahead. I think as a, oh God. Yeah, there you go. Next. Next, please. Uh, good evening. My name is Sandra Fernandez. As Marbella uh, said, I'm the Executive Director of Consejo Grafico Nacional. Uh, it is a pleasure to be part of Self-Help Graphics Artist Lab series during this summit. Um, I would like to thank Self-Help Graphics for inviting us to participate in this biennial, uh, and especially to Marbella Mur uh, Muro and Lulu Urdiales for organizing this Zoom presentation and also uh, the virtual exhibit. Next, please. I would like to start tonight by giving a brief overview of the history of the Consejo. It was established in the year 2000 by Gilberto Cárdenas, who's not only one of the most influential Latinos in the United States, but also one of the most important private collectors of Latino art in the United States. Through his collecting and interests as a scholar on immigration, race, and ethnic relations, his research took him to different art studios and print shops across the US and Mexico. With his vision as a community leader, he started connecting all these different artists and shops who didn't necessarily know about each other. The directors of the different print shops came together to exchange ideas about the work they were doing the needs they had as printmakers and the importance of having a national effort to advance Latino printmaking in the United States. It is at this point when the group is formed. Next, please. The initial talleres that joined the conversation have changed throughout the years. Not all the founding talleres have remained active in membership but many of the original are currently participants. At the beginning, the group called itself Consejo Nacional de Talleres Gráficas. Later, it changed into Consejo Gráfico. And in 2019, we became Consejo Gráfico Nacional. Next, please. With the sponsorship of the Enter University Program for Latino Research, the IUPLR, at Notre Dame University, where Gail was actually the executive director, the different print shops worked on a first project on education and awareness of HIV and AIDS. These are the, some of the images that um, came about from that collaboration. Next, please. Throughout the years, annual meetings followed in different parts of the country, and we also participated in national conferences supported by IUPLR, such as Latino Art Now and Siglo XXI Biennials. Next, please. We have also participated in numerous exhibitions. Next, please. Each taller has its own independent life, and there is a lot of pollination between each one of them. Artists from the different talleres are invited to teach, exhibit, do presentations, artist residencies, and exchange experiences with the others. We have also produced various portfolios that have traveled nationally and internationally. Next, please. The current mission statement was articulated in 2017, identifying the goals of the group. The Consejo Gráfico is a national, pardon me, is an independent coalition of printmaking workshops, talleres, formed to advance the capacity and legacy of Latino printmakers, inclusive of all, of all Americas in the United States. Through a combination of collaborative projects, exhibi exhibitions, educational outreach, and conferences, the Consejo promotes the continuity of critical and cultural activism in contemporary art. Next, please. Um, this is a map. Um, 
that shows the current locations of the various talleres. Next, please. Um, actually, if you can go back again. Sorry about that. Um, so I just wanted to give a brief introduction of what Consejo Gráfico Nacional is. Um, we're gonna be having each director of many of the talleres uh, members, current members, talking about their own talleres and, um, and also um, accompanying this exhibition, uh, there's gonna be, uh, accompanying this uh, presentation, there's gonna be uh, a virtual exhibition of the Perro Mundo portfolio. Next, please. Um, before each taller uh, speaks, I would like to introduce the Perro Mundo portfolio. And here you can see some, some information about, about the portfolio. Uh, Perro Mundo, uh, there is a humanistic perspective running through all of the projects of Consejo Gráfico. The portfolio Perro Mundo, Raw World was conceived before the pandemic, and somehow it landed addressing them less. Uh, Ramon Garcia, the writer of the text for the portfolio, Perro Mundo, said it distinctively regarding the images of the prints. Although visualized with mythical aspects, the characters are concrete symbols that identify the specific social struggles. You can, um, Take a look at the at all the images uh, with the link that will be provided later on. Next, please. So let's jump into um, the individual talleres. Uh, we each each uh, director is going to be presenting, so we will we can get started on that. Next, please. I hand it to Rene. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Thank you, uh, Sandra. And thank you to the three mosqueteras, uh, Lulu Cordiales, Marbella Muro, and Betty Avila for this opportunity uh, and for uh, putting together this uh, gathering. <clears throat> I would like to share a little bit about the experience of Arcel Press. In 2003, I co-organized a biennial print portfolio with artists from my home state in Mexico, Michoacán, artists who were living dead in the state of Michoacán, and there were six and six that were living in the United States. That included artist Ruben Trejo, whose parents had migrated from Michoacán, even though he was born in a uh, train uh, car box in uh, uh, Minnesota, and then also Alfredo Reguín. This portfolio was co-sponsored by the state of Michoacán, and in Casa Michoacán in Chicago, which is sort of like a house of culture that is independent. Inspired by this experience from 2003, I realized I knew many printmakers in the United States, Mexico, France, Spain, and other countries who might be interested in collaborating. So as Arceo Press in 2004, in 2004, sorry, I started organizing the first portfolio entitled Mnemonic to aid the memory which was published the following year. This first collaboration in theme was the result of several conversations with local artists. These talks continue over the years identifying new themes and focuses for subsequent portfolios, as well as suggestions from other art loving individuals and community organizations in the area. Over the 15 years, the focus has been to include pre-makers from different countries to collaborate under one theme and hoping some cross fertilization would emanate from that and to create exhibiting opportunities in each of the participants' countries. Our sale press has published 15 portfolios so far, including two co publications with the Chicago Society of Artists and one with the Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art in Chicago. Some of the portfolios include Posada 100 Year Legacy in 2013 the Centennial of the Mexican Revolution in 2010, Rostros de la Migración in 2012, and Water, Agua from 2018. 
with the help of participating printmakers, some of the portfolios have been exhibited in community centers, universities, and art museums. The places include Barcelona, Spain, Florence, Italy, Granada, Nicaragua, in Mexico, in the cities of Morelia, Tlaxcala, Durango, and Guadalajara, in the United States, in Texas, Florida, New York, Washington State, Colorado, and Illinois. For the most part, 24 artists participate in each portfolio. Artists include young and more experienced printmakers as well. I'm interested in making sure to include young artists as they are the ones who will continue our legacy and carry on the torch for the next generation. Our sale press decided to venture into self-publishing catalogs with the collaboration and support of participating printmakers. Our sale has published two traveling exhibition catalogs, which are based on uh, two other portfolios. One was in 2018, Superstitions, which were portfolios number one and number two. The exhibition traveled to Coronado Print Studio with Pepe Coronado and uh, Museo de Historia y Arte in Durango in Mexico. Also the Museo de la Plástica in Tlaxcala and the Centro Cultural Clavijero in the city of Morelia, as well as the town of El Centro Cultural Zumpango de, in Zumpango del Rio in the Estero Guerrero, Mexico. And the second one was 2019, is called The Border Crostas, an exhibition catalog, received partial funding from the Universidad Autónoma de Mexico in the Morelia campus. The show traveled to the Centro Cultural Morelia in Morelia, the Bridgeport Art Center in Chicago, uh, Jiquilpan uh, in the Estero Michoacán, the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, and to El Mercado Studios in Hollywood, Florida. In closing, I want to share that this traveling exhibition is now scheduled to go next year to two more venues, the University of Picardy, Jules Verne in Amiens, France, and also at the Cultural Institute of Mexico in France, in Paris. Thank you. Uh, Pepe Coronado, Coronado Print Studio. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Sandra, uh, how do you want me to weave Seria in here? Should I just mix it up? Uh, no, uh, just separate, because I, I have a section for Seria. Okay, all right. So, um, and although it's going to still be weaving there anyway. But um, uh, thank you, Self Help Graphics, for um, hosting us and, and giving us the chance to present. Uh, our latest work as Consejo Grafico uh, with the portfolio Perro Mundo. Um, and hi to everybody that is uh, watching this session. Um, my name is Pepe Coronado and I run uh, Coronado Print Studio. Um, it's a, a long trajectory of, of, of many places uh, that I started uh, in Austin, Texas in the early 90s. Uh, working with uh, Sam Coronado and the project he have just found, Seria Project, which we will elaborate on that a little later. Um, so I, I started here. I, it was a great experience for me. I was a young immigrant at the time. Um, I'm from Dominican Republic. I have moved to United States. I've been here for about two or three years when I met Sam. And... Um, I was already in the printmaking world, but commercially. Uh, and with Sam and the Seria project, I was able to channel all the energy into uh, a fine art community oriented project. Uh, and that's what really appealed to me when Sam explained the project to me. Um, we joined the forces at the time and um, I'm talking about Seria, but from my perspective at this moment, because Seria for me was an educational experience. Uh, as a lot of uh, master printers in our communities are trained in the community. So that was uh, really valuable to be facing so many artists every year and working with them uh, in this process that involve technical aspect, but conceptual ap as aspect and, and image development um, and the technologies of the time. So that was really uh, revealing to me 
the impact I received from that experience was uh, the value of, of, of the pre-making process as a community art form. So um, a few years later, I moved to Washington DC where I uh, got engaged in academia and some other projects that were not necessarily oriented towards the Latino community. Uh, throughout teaching, I realized that um, I was uh, kind of missing something in my practice, which was, um, uh, you know, more of, of the Caribbean artists that were uh, applying the printmaking process. Uh, I learned so much from the Chicano experience. Uh, I, I actually say that I learned to be an immigrant through the Chicano uh, kind of perspective. And that really was very impactful. So eventually I was able to move to New York and uh, embedded myself in the community, in the Dominican American community, which is New York, is the, sec uh, the, the second largest city of Dominican Republic or the biggest uh, population of Dominicans in the US. So um, that process uh, allowed me to meet a bunch of artists and we formed, we co-founded a, a collective called Dominican Your Proyecto Grafica. And, and actually our first portfolio in 2010 is now part of the Chicano uh, graphic exhibition at the Smithsonian and, and showcasing how the Chicano graphic movement has all these other fertile grounds in other aspects and other communities. So it was very impactful. We formed that collective and is still uh, active. Um, and I also, that's when I founded Coronado Print Studio and I, uh, learning from the experience that Sam had at Self Help Graphics and applying Austin, Sam actually sent me to Self Help Graphics so I can see what he saw. So that that experience evolved into me uh, developing conceptually a framework for my studio where I will uh, reach out to to Caribbean American artists and bring that uh, kind of. Uh, diverse voices uh, as, as together as we can in, in certain groups. And that was a, kind of the concentration of the studio. Uh, and we created many projects and that's where we hosted our uh, Rene Arcel portfolio. Uh, and, and, and actually I went to Chicago and showed Rene too, so that kind of cross pollination of communities. Um, Eventually, uh, I actually am now back in Austin, Texas. I moved here uh, uh, two months before the pandemic broke last year, uh, set up a studio and uh, eventually throughout the year, I had to pack and move again. And I'm housing now at the old Coronado studio, the, the old Sam project, a serie home, uh, collaborating now with Jill Ramirez, his wife, into kind of uh, see how we can develop uh, some other projects in combination between, uh, you know, Serious Legacy and, and my work and combining also with Jonathan Rebolloso, who was a master printer with Serie and now is part of the, the collective here. So uh, it's a long story, but that's where we are now at the moment. So thank you. Next slide, please. Dignidad Rebelde. We can't hear you, Melanie. Ah, I'm on mute. <laughs> I'm on mute, sorry. That's Classic good. Zoom mistake. Thank you so much for the invitation to participate participate. I was at the first print summit. So it's exciting to be here again. Um, people sometimes assume that Dignidad Rebelde is just like shorthand to refer to myself and my partner and the art making that we do. But as the saying goes, the sum is greater than, than the parts. Dignidad Rebelde is a creative collaborative space that we organize. Um, and we're based in Halchis, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Halquin Chochen Ohlone. This photo up here on the left shows the two of us, myself and Jesus Barraza, um, who founded Dignidad Rebelde. We believe art can be a powerful reflection of people's struggles. 
and their desire for the radical transformation of our world. Following principles from Chicanismo and Zapatismo, we create visual narratives that reflect people's righteous resistance to all forms of domination and control in order to produce artwork that we can return to the hands of the people who inspire it. As Chicanx peoples, we're committed to an anti-colonial, queered, feminist praxis that continually seeks to emancipate our people from the oppression seeking to undermine us in this world. Over the past 500 years, the history of the global majority has been disrupted by colonialism and genocide, heteropatriarchy, exploitation, and the fiction that is white supremacy. Our art is grounded in third world and indigenous social movements that build people's power to transform these conditions of fragmentation, the loss of culture, displacement, and the theft of land that result from these brutal histories. We visually honor the vibrant spirit of these movements and draw connections between struggles with the intention of inspiring solidarities among communities worldwide. Though we're best known for our printmaking, we actually utilize a robust multidisciplinary process that includes painting, textile work, photography, digital and graphic design, sculpture, mixed media installation, new media and technology. And we're constantly refining and expanding our skills and our forms as necessary to best aid our effort to unearth and visually chronicle the stories buried under the weight of dominant narratives. As culture workers, we use a social practice approach that values the experience of collective sharing and making as much as the finished piece. We use an art-based community building approach. I'm gonna repeat that an art-based community building approach and a ploy of pedagogy which shapes the tayed as a space for horizontal knowledge exchange. In these workshops, we demystify the art making process by sharing skills, tools, and the means of production. We make space to share our stories and be in dialogue and to be vulnerable with one another in order to make meaning of the wounds and the trauma we have suffered as oppressed people. We open ourselves up to transfigure our collective pain and anger into power. Facilitating communal spaces is a joyful act because when we provide people the opportunity to exercise their full creativity, they not only learn how to produce art, but they also blossom into powerful prophets whose radical visions help us imagine healthier ways of living that are rooted in human dignity, reverence for the earth and respect for our non-human relatives. Taken all together in the multiple aspects of our art practice coalesce to act as a prism through which we are able to glimpse liberatory possibilities, futures rooted in our pasts for, our, for ourselves and for our people. We are committed to nurturing a model of art making anchored in collaboration with other artists, protectors, culture bearers, grassroots leaders, movement organizations to produce freedom oriented creative works that help advance humanity to a stage beyond capitalism and all other systems of despair, destruction, and death. Juntos, todos somos la dignidad rebelde. Thank you. Thank you, Melody. Uh, next slide, please. We have uh, Monográfico Colectivo and uh, Marianne Sadowski will be presenting. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for um, having us here, participating with everyone. It's so um, it's wonderful to to hear and to see all of you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm here with Monográfico Colectivo, and um, here in Los Angeles, California. Monográfico Colectivo, which used to be Los de Abajo Printmaking Collective, is an ethnically diverse group of artists committed to the promotion of printmaking through collective projects and collaborative artworks, as well as providing workshops in diverse communities. Los de Abajo Printmaking Collective was founded in 2004 by a group of artists that met at the print workshop at Self-Help Graphics and Art in East LA. Uh, their initial goal was to hone their printmaking skills and exchange ideas. 
two of the artists, Agustin Baron and Poli Mar Marichal, who were at the time printmaking instructors at Self-Help Graphic, organized the first print portfolio titled Basic Needs. Since then, we have organized several print portfolios among our members and invited artists. The name Los de Abajo, which means those from below, was inspired by the revolt of the downtrodden during the Mexican Revolution. And it also referred at the time to the physical location of the workshop where the collective used to work directly below Self-Help Graphics Administration Office. We have had the opportunity to be a resident collective at Self-Help Graphic for several years and have had also um, studio residency at uh, SPARC, which is Social and Public Art Resource Center for a few years. In 2018, after Poli Marichal, the backbone of Los de Abajo Printmaking Collective left to Puerto Rico and um, a time of adjustment with different uh, personal issues with different uh, members of the group, the group decided to change the name to a more playful name that would relate to a one of a kind print, the mono print. Since most of our colla collaborative work are one of a kind large scale prints, this seemed to describe the collective's work as well as the playful approach to some of our projects. Over these 17 years, the group has had more than 20 members and has invited several guest artists to participate in exhibitions, print portfolios and collaborative work. But the main core group of a few members has been there from the beginning to the present, Kay Brown, Don Newton, Wen Lee, Victor Rosas, and Mariana Sadowski. Since its foundation, Los de Abajo uh, slash Monografico Colectivo has had solo shows in New York, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, in Oaxaca, in, in Tijuana, and Mexico, among other places. As artists and printmakers, we have been always interested in social justice issues when creating our individual as well as collaborative work. Some of our themed exhibitions have specifically addressed current issues such as immigration, water, the environment, the US prison system, among others. Our mission has been to push the boundaries of printmaking in order to explore new techniques and new forms of expression. Each of the members are teaching artists and exhibit their own work independently as well. When we collaborate, we work closely together, finding new ways to incorporate our diverse styles into one of a kind large scale prints and print installations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marianne. Next slide, please. Um, let me welcome Francesco Siqueiros uh, from El Nopal uh, Press. Francesco, why don't we move to the next slide, please? And then we'll, we'll come back to, to Francesco. Can you hear me? Oh, there he is. Yes. Yeah, but I, I don't see, I don't see my, my picture out there, but you can hear me, correct? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, very good. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Sandra. And uh, hello, everybody, all of the consejeros. Uh, uh, I wrote something here. Um, El Nopal Press was conceived in uh, 1990 in Los Angeles. And I consider El Nopal Press in its totality a concept, uh, conceptual artwork, which expresses a multiplicity of desires and agendas. Uh, the print production represents a variety of cultural interpretations that although never complete, it underwrites the strength and diversity. The motivating desire of the creation of El Nopal Press is the collaboration with artists, uh, projecting results and provoking with time a historical narrative with alternative readings. The value of an original print is all in the work and materials required to produce it, the abstract value is the message and the exchange value is the strength of the message in the politics of culture. What is considered important, the intention to capture the mood of a period 
in history is exemplified in the dissemination of ideas through prints, not to ignore the more powerful digital media is a procurer of influence. Printers produce hard copies. It is embedded in tradition and the transformation of materiality. Prints are documents, testaments to time and continuity. Being part of the collective Consejo Gráfico is having a wider palette that complicates and enriches the aesthetics of culture in all its possible interpretations. There is a humanist perspective running through all of the projects of Consejo Gráfico, the portfolio Perro Mundo, the last, this last portfolio we collaborated, Raw World was conceived before the pandemic and somehow it landed addressing the Malays. Uh, thank you very much. That would be my presentation. Thank you, Francesco. Next slide, please. Uh, friend, uh, Juan Fuentes is the director of Pajar Editions. He could not be with us tonight, but I'm gonna read um, a little about his, um, his uh, studio. Pajaro Editions was established in 2007. The studio is located at Juan Fuentes' home in the Bayview community of San Francisco. Originally, Fuentes' goal was to create a space to share with other pre-making artists in the Bay Area and to provide a place to teach others. The studio has created work about various struggles, beginning with posters for the art of Democracy War, an empire exhibit held at the Meridian Gallery in 2008. Several artists used the studio space to print posters for the Occupy Movement in 2011. Recently, Fuentes printed posters for the Standing Rock Struggle in North Dakota and a large poster for the Black Lives Matter movement. He has also been part of several print portfolios and continues to do workshops with community youth and adults. Fuentes' studio is set up for relief and screen print and used for his continual personal development and creativity. Next slide, please. Let me welcome Poli Marichal, the director of uh, Poli Marichal Print Studio. Um, Lulu, could you please uh, play the video first? Thank you. After living and working for 31 years in Los Angeles, California, I now have my studio in Miramar, an old neighborhood in San Juan, Puerto Rico. My studio is on the second floor of the house. A tabletop proofing press built by Arteina arrived this February. This portable press is perfect for relief printmaking, collagraphs, embossing, letterpress, and dry point. My objective is to continue developing an art practice that includes printmaking in many of its forms, as well as mixed media works, hand printed books, and experimental animation and video. My works explore two predominant tendencies that sometimes coalesce and sometimes manifest themselves separately. My interest in expressing social, political, and environmental concerns, and a more introspective and primal desire to explore my personal visions.
That was a beautiful video, Holly. Thank you. Do you. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, uh, hearing Marianne talk about Los Delos breaks my heart because, you know, uh, I had such a wonderful time in Los Angeles with Los de Abajo. Uh, we collaborated in so many projects. And now, you know, uh, when I moved back to Puerto Rico, I, you know, I'm helping take care of my mother, who is already 94, and my mother in law So, I mean, it's, uh, it's been a, a big change in my life in many ways. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I established a little studio. And I also started working with a... A collaborative uh, group of filmmakers at the Centro para el Grabado y las Artes del Libro, which was at this beautiful old building called the Carnegie Library. Unfortunately, you know, it, it was open for two years, but the extreme right party won the elections. And basically, they kicked us out because it was a government building and the past administration had let us use the space. So the director, Consuelo Botay, who is one of our prime, you know, wonderful filmmakers, uh, was heartbroken because that was a dream for her to, to establish a, a space where we could all work together. So, I mean, the dream is not dead. We're still working on it, but right now we don't have a space to, so everybody's working in their own little spaces. Um, yeah, but hopefully by the time uh, the Graphic Council comes uh, to Puerto Rico in 2023, we'll have something going. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I've been participating in many uh, exhibitions here in Puerto Rico and doing some commission work. Uh, so it's, it's been a challenge. It's been a lot of work. We restored a very old house. And uh, my husband and I did a, a lot of the stuff ourselves, you know, the gardens and everything. So it's been hard work, uh, but uh, I have hope for, for the future and to continue my work and, and collaborating with other artists as well. So thank you. And I, I want to thank Self Graphics, my home away from home, uh, for inviting us. Uh, I really miss you guys. Uh, so, muchos abrazos y besos desde Puerto Rico. Thank you, Polly. Next slide, please. I'd like to invite Ramiro Rodriguez, director of Rio Mar Studio. Good evening, everybody. Um, glad to be here. Uh, I, Rio Mar Studios is a small family-run studio located in South Bend, Indiana. Um, and it's, it's pretty much myself, uh, my wife, Lori Rousseau, my, our friends, uh, Joe Segura and Rachel Welling. And we work on collaborative projects. Um, Rio Mar started as an outgrowth of my own personal art practice when I was invited by Gilberto Cardenas um, at the University of Notre Dame to sit in with his, um, when he had the idea of, of putting, pulling together various Latino uh, printmakers um, to make a group to, to do these community projects. And because I was on campus and because he knew my work, he, he invited me to join. So as, a, as an outgrowth of my own, my own works, um, I had the good fortune of, of meeting and learning and working alongside um, some, some of my good friends um, like Joe Segura, like Sam Coronado, like um, um, uh, Malakias Montoya, who I also got um, a chance to learn screen printing from when he was a visiting artist at the University of Notre Dame. And our um, small studio is basically a, a small Charles Brand press um, that we create uh, most of the prints on that we do, um, a larger press that is in the same building um, that we share with, with Joe Segura. And um, pretty soon we hope a Vandercook letterpress that will allow us to expand our um, range of collaboration 
with the artists in um, the Taylor Street Art Studios where we house um, the studio and hopefully with the rest of the community. Thanks. Thank you, Ramiro. Uh, next slide, please. The Seria project. Um, Jill could not join us today either, so I'm going to read um, about Seria project. Sam Coronado's intention for the Seria project was to create a solid platform that allowed for both established and emerging Latino artists to reach a bigger audience and in turn empower their words and creativity to spread to a greater world. With much dedication, Coronado served the Seria project as executive director up until his passing in November of 2013. His wife and longtime supporter of the Seria project, Jill Ramirez, has since then stepped into Coronado's shoes with a plan to keep his legacy alive. Currently, and after COVID, the Seria project is rebuilding itself to make a reappearance in the fall of 2021. Like uh, Pepe mentioned before, uh, Seria project has had a big influence of many of us. And uh, he also mentioned that Sam learned um, uh, cell screen and, and, and um, took the idea, uh, the model of self graphics to into the Seria project. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about my experience of the Seria project uh, during my presentation. Um, next slide, please. I would like to welcome Jose Arenas, director of, of Tana Taller Arte del Nuevo Amanecer. Thank you everyone for um, <clears throat> allowing me to share a little bit about, um, about Tana. Um, Taller Arte del Nuevo Amanecer is a collaborative partnership between the Chicana Chicano Studies Department at the University of California, Davis, and the greater Woodland community. At Tana, we offer a fully functioning silkscreen studio, Chicano Latino art exhibition space, and a teaching center for the arts. Through exhibiting, printing, and teaching, we cultivate the cultural and artistic life of the comunidad and regional youth with an express view that the arts are essential to a community's development and well being. The Taller was founded in 2009 by Malakias Montoya and Carlos Jackson in Woodland, California as an extension of the silkscreen printmaking program in the Chicana Studies Department at UC Davis. It was further shaped as an extension of the poster workshop philosophy that people are empowered through the creation of culture. With the belief that the space shouldn't be limited to the university, Malakias and Carlos structured the taller in such a way that the UC Davis student interns um, could instruct and actively engage community youth in the silkscreen process. The exchange between the community members and university faculty, students and staff has undoubtedly bridged what could feel like an insurmountable divide. Although Woodland is only 10 miles away from the UCD campus, for many, the university can sometimes feel worlds away. Tana, which in Spanish means art workshop of the new dawn or new beginning, reflects a vision, a vision of what the taller is designed to be, a transformational space where art and culture could be used to teach and inspire. In spite of the challenges faced by the pandemic, we continue, to, we continue this central effort through virtual silkscreen workshops, exhibitions, and cultural events. And I'd also like to take a moment to share a particularly inspiring quote by Malakias, who is a longtime mentor and I've worked with for many, many years. Um, I am much more articulate and able to express myself more eloquently through my art. It is with this voice that I attempt to communicate, especially to that silent and often ignored populace of Chicano, Mexican and Central American working class along with other disenfranchised people of the world. This form allows me to awaken consciousness, to reveal reality, and to actively work to transform it. I find this, this um, quote just incredibly moving. And as I think of our Latino youth, um, which have been historically underserved 
and who a much great extent marginalized. I'm hopeful that the dedicated, this dedicated space um, will continue to ignite curiosity, empower, and as Malakia says, awaken consciousness. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Next slide, please. I would like to welcome now uh, Nitsa Tufino from Taller Boricua um, RTP Studio. Hello, how are you? How is everybody? Thank you for inviting Taller and thank you Consejo Grafico and Sandra for doing such a wonderful, wonderful um, job. Uh, we are, uh, Taller Boricua is located in New York City uh, we have two buildings, 121 East, 106. That's, that's where our print shop uh, is located. And we have some galleries at the Julia de Burgos where we have other artists come in and we do uh, different shows during the year. Um, the Taller Boricua started in 1969 during the times of the Young Lord and the Black Panther because of, of the injustices that were being happening. And we started doing post posters and seal screen and other uh, materials to uh, engage people in the cause that there was no housing health. And uh, the arts play a very big part on that. So Taller Boricua became part of that. We used to be called este, Alma Boricua, which is the soul of the Boricuas in, in El Barrio. Uh, so El Taller has existed already for 50 years. We have a major, we had a major show of all of our archive posters and things that we have done that you could look at the Museo del Barrio uh, site. I think the show is gonna be up there for, for a year. Uh, so you could get an idea and read uh, about Taller Boricua. Uh, we are happy to be part of Consejo Gráfico. Uh, the Puerto Ricans have a very big, uh, how would I say, affiliation with the Mexican. I'm Mexican, born in Mexico and with Puerto Rico. And we are very big in the pre-making uh, of seal screen and all kinds of things. But the mission of Taller also is to gather those artists that are out there that are in different disciplines in the arts and don't know anything about printmaking. And we take them and we teach them all the different techniques. It's all free and they can come in and use the presses and all of that. And then we work on portfolio prints depending on what is the need of the community. So, uh, so we are still struggling. Uh, even now with COVID, we have to close down the space and we are gonna be starting to open and doing Zoom, Zoom classes and uh, trying to deal with the situation of COVID. COVID is not, uh, how would I say, it's not very good in New York City. Uh, there's a lot of homelessness, you know, El Barrio where we're at uh, in Harlem, East Harlem, uh, how would I say, it's been hit very, very hard. So if you have any other questions or what, of anything like that, you could contact us at Taller Boricua and uh, if you're in New York City and any artist out there who wants to uh, be part of this, I mean, uh, we will be happy to view their portfolios and make some decision with the rest of the collective uh, at Taller Boricua that later become the Rafael Tufino pre-making workshop because uh, he was one of the mentors for Taller. So any questions or anything like that, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Nitsa. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. I'd like to welcome uh, Betty Avila from Self-Help Graphics and Art. Gracias, Sandra. I hope you don't get mad. I'm gonna share um, a, a different uh, deck here. Please do. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. So, um, you know, just to give a little bit of background on, on self-help graphics for those of you that don't know uh, Self-Help Graphics was founded in 1973 in East LA by Sister Karen Bocalero and uh, two queer artists from Mexico. 
and uh, really came up in the time of the Chicano Civil Rights Movement. Uh, the Chicano identity is really still in formation at that point. And here's this Italian American printmaking nun who found a need or saw a need rather um, for this community to create work, um, to create work collaboratively, to speak to the world around them and everything that was happening to that community at the time. Uh, and to just create space for people to show their work, right? Here's a community of Chicano artists that's not uh, given easy access to uh, mainstream art world institutional spaces. And that's really the, um, the, the origin of, of self-help and the printmaking program, the professional printmaking program uh, is the gem of self-help graphics. Printmaking has been at the core of this organization from the beginning, but the professional printmaking program really started in, um, in this current form in 1983. And the, the structure is such that artists are invited to participate um, in a residency in the studio. Uh, they come in and what we call an atelier as a cohort of artists, sometimes as individual artists, uh, but really the experience is meant to be communal. Um, the artists are creating their own work, but as you can see here, um, there's definitely uh, process is, is a big part of this experience and the sharing of process, the sharing of learning, the sharing of techniques uh, is, is an important part of, of the self help graphics experience in our printmaking studio. Just sharing some of the, the prints that have come out of here. Um, I think I give great credit to Sister Karen Bocalero who understood that as a community-based organization, self-help graphics was not going to have uh, the ability or capacity to properly archive the work. Uh, and so uh, in the early eighties, we actually started a relationship with UC Santa Barbara and our archive um, is actually one of their flagship archives at the California Ethnic and Multicultural uh, Archives on the campus. So something that's so important to understand about self-help is that we are um, very community rooted. Our program is, is incredibly dynamic. You know, we're known for Day of the Dead. We're known for youth programs, um, all types of exhibitions throughout the year. Um, and so there's this trust that exists between self-help graphics and the community that we serve and work with. And there's also great trust uh, between self-help graphics and a lot of the institutional art spaces uh, that weren't necessarily interested in the community that we serve when self-help started and to a certain degree to this day. Uh, and so self-help plays, I think this really um, important role uh, and you know, sort of straddles this line between the community and the institutional art world. So artists who are producing at self-help who may not otherwise be known by you know, some of these major museums uh, or collectors are uh, being exposed to them through self-help graphics, through their participation in our studio. Some of the institutions that have uh, prints from self-help in their collections are places like the Smithsonian American Art Museum, LACMA, the National Museum of Mexican Art, the Blanton Museum. Uh, and some of that is both through um, their relationship with self-help graphics, but also through relationships with people like Gil Cardenas, who Sandra mentioned early on. So those advocates and those individuals are also um, equally important in this ecosystem. So you're getting to see some of the artists that we've uh, hosted in the studio and have gotten to work with. And you know, I really wanna um, communicate that we are, we're rooted in, in the Chicano community and we exist uh, really through that, um, through that seed. But the studio itself has seen artists of all backgrounds, um, you know, artists like Mark Stephen Greenfield, uh, Robert Graham. Um, so the space really is uh, about collaboration, about um, I think giving artists uh, the ability to sort of um, experiment a little bit and to be guided, right? We're working with artists who, some are incredible printmakers like Poli Marichal. So many people uh, in the Consejo have been through our studio. We're also working with artists who have never dealt with prints. And so there's um, also a really incredible range of, uh, of skill sets that um, our studio gets to see. We've had international exchanges. Uh, a notable one that we did was many years ago uh, where Sister Karen sent Ophelia Esparza and Yolanda Gonzalez to Scotland. Uh, and that was to stage a Day of the Dead celebration. But the print studio itself has also had an exchange. And this was a recent one that took place in 2015-2016. Uh, um, so five of uh, our artists from Self-Help Graphics went to 
uh, Bayer in Havana, and then they sent five artists to self-help graphics. So our, our reach is international as well. Just getting to share. This was a project we did in 2019 that was curated by Mio Stevens Candara. And as I start to close here, I do also want to speak to the ripple effects of self-help graphics, as has been mentioned before. Sam Coronado was inspired by the work that was happening uh, in our studio and replicated that and made it his own in Austin and you know, has had his connections with Sandra, uh, his connections with Pepe. Um, and I think we, we see that through, um, throughout the, the art world. So not just in printmaking, I think the, there's so many people who have had a touch point, whether they're um, you know, printmaking artists, musical artists, um, there's, it's, it's very much a, an intersection here in Los Angeles, but I think really, truly on, on a national level. And as I wrap up here, you know, the first time that we hosted the Printmaking Summit in uh, 2017, it was on the heels of, um, you know, within a two year window, we lost uh, incredible uh, artists like Fernando Salicrup from the Teatro Boricua. Sam Coronado himself, and then here in Los Angeles, we lost Richard Duardo. So here was a series of uh, master printers um, who we were starting to lose. And um, you know, part, part of the seed for the Printmaking Summit was that question of this long-term sustainability of, of this community of printmaking, of Latinx printmaking. Um, and I, I am very grateful to the Consejo Grafico because I think that we are very much um, partners uh, in, in that work together, both uh, in our individual talleres and the work that we do locally, uh, but also through the collaborative projects that are taking place um, almost on an annual basis. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Betty. Could we go back to the, um, to the PowerPoint, Lulu? All right, so I guess it's my turn. Um, well, the cross-pollination that we are witnessing tonight that has occurred within all the talleres um, in its 21 years of existence testifies to the amazing vision of Gilberto Cárdenas. Um, I am so grateful to have met every single one of you I was actually initially blessed to have met Sam Coronado when I first moved to Austin, Texas. He gave me the opportunity to be part of the Serie project, inviting me to be a visiting artist and create my first print for the Serie project. Then one thing led to the, to the other and we became close friends. And I also became a board member for the Serie project um, until I moved uh, here to New Jersey in 2015. Through the Serie project, I was introduced to all the people in the Talleres, um, people that I have never dreamed to know in person, uh, like Malakias Montoya, uh, Juan Fuentes, uh, Nitsa Tufino, uh, and, and every, every single one of you that have presented tonight. It really opened up a, uh, a world of opportunities and, and wonderful um, interactions. And it brought me to, to my roots. Um, and um, it's, for me, it, it's really uh, one of the best things that have happened uh, during my professional career um, to have met all of you and to be part of Consejo Gráfico Nacional. Um, early on when I was uh, a board member for the Serie project, Sam asked me to, to represent him at a few um, um, annual meetings of Consejo Gráfico Nacional. And I, um, I loved doing that. And uh, I became more involved with uh, with Consejo Gráfico, um, especially once I moved to New Jersey. And that's when um, my S. Fernandez Press and Taller um, started, uh, was formed and started to, to be um, um, participating and in, 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 in doing uh, 
more projects. Um, I became uh, more and more involved, like I said, with Consejo Gráfico. And uh, after a few years, uh, I was elected uh, to be the director, which is a role that I love to do. Um, it, uh, it connects me every day to every one of you. Um, S. Fernandez uh, present taller is dedicated um, to the development, advancement, and dissemination of pre-making knowledge as an art form through research, exhibitions, and the instruction of pre-making to children and adults. One of its main interests is to highlight and showcase the unique aesthetics and art content of Latino artists, artists in the US and beyond. I'm particularly interested in, in continuing to support uh, artists from Latino origins, origins since uh, there is not much of it. Um, and um, I'm very interested that uh, Consejo Gráfico Nacional continues to do all the great things that we are doing. And, um, and it's, it's really a pleasure uh, for me to, to do this. Um, I don't want to talk more about myself or my taller, and I would like to uh, open now a conversation with the panelists. And um, I would like to, to talk about two, two separate topics, uh, the importance of Consejo Gráfico and also a little bit about the impact, uh, positive, negative advance, uh, adjustments that, hope that COVID has had on the talleres. And um, if we, if anyone wants to talk, uh, I guess you can just uh, unmute yourselves and, um, and go ahead and, and, um, and, and, and have a conversation. Sandra, I'm going to just interrupt very quickly to encourage yes. the audience to place their questions to the talleres. Um, in the Q&A uh, feature at the bottom of the screen, and then we'll make uh, time at the end of the uh, of the discussion to answer those questions. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. So I don't. Um, I can't see the hands up. Maybe. Maybe oh, just. Yeah. I could jump in. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Jose from Tana. Um, well, it's been uh, quite a year, hasn't it? Um, we, last year, actually, just to kind of uh, preface that, right before everything shut down in um, early March, uh, we were very excited to show a collection, a selection of um, Gilberto Cardenas prints, and we had everything ready to go, and of course, everything was canceled. Um, and so the very first reaction was, uh, you know, um, of course, staying safe, looking after our families and friends, and uh, and then uh, looking for guidance on on which way to go. Um, and that took some weeks, and and even I would say months, where we just started um, thinking about um, how we were going to connect with our community youth and continue um, providing uh, workshops. Um, and, and having never really been confronted with a situation like that, it was a lot of conversation, a lot of dialogue and, and just a lot of kind of like thinking outside of the box, I guess, and brainstorming where it took some time to, you know, circle back to, um, um, things we had done in the past, uh, little videos. And for myself, I'm an, I'm an, both an artist and educator. I had taught online, um, before some art classes. So I brought a little bit of that knowledge with um, how to put together a lesson plan or put together a kind of a, 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 um, uh, some kind of a video tutorial um, to uh, um, basically to 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 keep that um, connection with with our with, again the, our participants um, people that would come in to make posters and so um, not to take up too much time but basically what we what we started doing and we are doing now. 
uh, until we get guidance from the university and our county on how we're going to move forward with 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 having people in the space because right now we still don't have anybody in the space. Um, it was doing um, virtual uh, um, um, lessons and uh, and then putting together kits, art kits, where we can put those in the hands of um, of area youth um, and and so that's worked. Um, although we're always learning because now we have a we had a basic kit that would provide um, acetate, ruby lith, um, and basic materials so that somebody could knock out a design, and then we would print it. We we print it um, in house with our staff, uh, and so we have Zoom sessions where somebody will come in uh, through Zoom and they'll give us uh, feedback on what colors they want to use for their print, and they see firsthand that um, run of print. So the squeegee pulling that ink of um, their design on the screen. So, and I'll just kind of pass that along um, since there are, I'm sure many who wanna jump in. Thank you, Jose. Anybody sure. else? Well, we at Taller, uh, we at Taller, what's happening is the, we are in conversation with the mayor of the city of New York, de Blasio and our councilwoman, uh, Diana Ayala, because we haven't been able really to use the gallery space that we have. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been conflicting with paying rent and then people, you know, you don't want people to get sick. We had a big exhibit of four great printers that we are from part of the collective that opened a show in March and then we had to close down. So we've been learning to work with the internet uh, to put this show in the in the internet now this is a beginning that is opening a new a new field in a way on what things we can do through teaching and having shows and things like that so our spaces in the gallery uh they're going to be given to the city of new york for for vaccination for COVID. that's what taller is working on now in terms of the gallery space we have done this before when we had uh crisis with Puerto Rico on the hurricane and stuff like that, where we were giving them services, people traveling from the island here and giving them clothes, uh, food and things like that. So now for COVID, I think that we're planning to do that. In terms of the print, print shop, we had to close it down because we didn't want people to get sick, you know what I mean, being in the space. But now people are beginning to get uh, vaccinated you know, getting the vaccine, that doesn't mean you're not gonna get it, but we're gonna wait till April and May, and then we're gonna start opening it, opening it up and giving it to the artists to use one day. You know, just one person will come in and work the whole day, and then we'll, we'll open it up for se seven days and things like that. So that's what we're, we're, we're trying to do. Uh, at the, at the print shop. The other thing is too, that because of the situation in the city with the homelessness uh, and also the big, uh, how would I say the Asian community, the Asian community is being attacked by, uh, you know, uh, hate crime is really up. You know what I'm saying? We want to work also in this, in terms of social justice and bring some Asian American artists that have not done prints that we would like them to do prints. And also I would like to, uh, how would I say? I would like to, and I would pay for the paper, uh, the ink and uh, how would I say, and to make a portfolio on this issue of the Asian uh, hate crimes that are happening in the city. Uh, I did, this is an opportunity for us to connect with uh, Asian American people uh, Japanese, Filipino, uh, Chinese, and all that. I'm saying that because my son was attacked. Uh, he's Japanese, half Japanese, and he was attacked in the street in Little Korea on 33rd Street mm -hmm. by one white male and another guy just because he's, uh, he's Japanese. Not, don't know him, had no interaction with them. You know, it's just that they jumped in and they started beating him up and uh, he had concussions, so he was in the hospital for a while. So I'm dealing with the Asian community on this issue, but this is happening in the city. You're in the train and you're Asian, even though you're covered up and you have a, a mask, they can see that your eyes are slanted. I don't know if this was a a brought about because of our great president, Mr. Trump, accusing the Chinese of bringing COVID to the United States. 
So we at Taller uh, and the artists that we have at Taller, we are gonna be really working on this issue. And I would like Consejo Grafico to also unite on this and maybe we can do a big exhibit and call it to a big action in this country so that uh, this should not, that's exit. I know it exists against all the Latino, you know, Mexican, Ecuadorian, from Ecuador, Peruvian and all of that. But this hate because you're an immigrant and you're here from another country or you're American because you're already an American citizen, people should not have that. And this is all white privilege. This is a white privilege situation. So anyway, so these are the things that we're gonna be working carefully still, you know, with the distancing and all of that at the print shop. So, I mean, I'm throwing it out there for you guys that maybe we can have more conversation. I will pay for the paper, for, for ink, whatever, the, the traveling, making the portfolio, you know, sending it out to Mexico. If we gotta pay whatever we need to pay. Um, uh, Taller is willing to do that, okay? So thank you. That sounds wonderful, uh, Nitsa. We will we will talk more about this uh, separately. Yeah. Okay. But for people to be knowledgeable about things like that uh, that are happening, and the homelessness, you know, I don't know how it's in other cities and the closing down of businesses, like uh, it's, it's such a big impact. I don't I don't know how it's in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? But uh, and, and because New York City is such a big city, so when you when you when you are driving with your car within the city, that's when you start noticing mm -hmm. what's going on. You know what I mean? And also the impact that it has had in our, you know, in, in El Barrio where we have so many Mexicans with mm -hmm. businesses, uh, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, COVID has really hit the world in such a way. I just hope that we can turn all this around to a very positive situation for all, all of us as, as citizens of the globe. Yeah, thank you, Nitsa. Um, we only have uh, about 10 minutes left. I don't know if, Marbella, we have any questions from the audience that uh, address to the, to the talleres? No, not yet. Okay, well, um, would anybody else like to participate? talking about the impact of, uh, of COVID um, in your specific taller, or if you would like to talk about uh, the importance of uh, Consejo Grafico Nacional. Well, I like to say something. Um, I think, you know, when I joined Consejo Grafico through Self-Help Graphics, first I was representing Self-Help, and then I, um, applied with Los de Abajo, so we became members. And slowly but surely, I became uh, an independent artist as part of Consejo. But the, uh, what we all, uh, what Consejo did that was so amazing was um, to create bridges between cities in the United States and different ways of seeing uh, the collaborative process so we, we could you know, to talk to people like Coronado Studio. That I, I was a, 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 I did a residency there, and it was such a fantastic experience. And uh, a, being able to join in in uh, different shows around the United States, we did a show at Taller Boricua actually, and it created such a, it was such an inspiration. And also it created this uh, bonding that I think is something we should promote more because so many artists work on their own, alone in their studios. And uh, having this uh, communication really opens our, our imagination. It opens doors. I hopefully in the future we'll have a bridge to Puerto Rico so we can do things here with Consejo Grafico, with self help graphics. Uh, uh, because that's a, a, as artists who really uh, care for the solidarity and uh, for the fight for justice, because I think all our talleres are involved in trying to destroy the injustice in this world that is becoming, you know, be unfortunately, I think the oligarchs are taking over and we're letting them. 
And that really worries me a lot because it's becoming like the, the Middle Ages once again where the big lords are in the castle and everybody else is begging for food because they're taking everything. And we can't let that happen. And I think as artists, we all, uh, uh, we have that as a goal. Uh, so Consejo has been so important because yeah. most of our projects deal with social justice and with addressing injustice in the world. So I feel really proud to be part of it and hopefully we can keep expanding and creating pressure for change. So thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying, Polly. And I wanted to add that uh, the friendship that, that has been created amongst all of us for working together in all these projects is something that um, is not easy to, to find and to it across. Um, also, um, you mentioned the expansion and I wanted to let everybody know that um, we would love to, to expand, but unfortunately at this moment, we, we don't have a, a nonprofit status. We, all the work that we do um, is volunteer work. And um, as you know, every taller has its own um, function and its own um, it, the own work to do. So it's a little bit difficult to to work for the for the for the Consejo Gráfico Nacional when you do have another full time job um, mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Um, so for all, all the people that are out there that would love to to be part of us. I would encourage uh, you to look up our list of taller members and contact them because individually you can you can approach each taller and 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 work with them. Um, our collaborative projects, our portfolios, uh, usually we invite each taller um, has the um, the option of inviting one artist from outside the taller to collaborate. So if you are in the area um, close to one of the talleres, please reach out. And um, I think that you will find um, the community that um, we are all long for, uh, sharing uh, visions, sharing um, um, needs and, um, and desires to, to, to work together uh, for a better uh, world, I would say. Are there are there any other questions or comments? And I think just to add to that, Sandra, um, you know, the, if it's not uh, with the Consejo Gráfico, I think that the the Consejo provides a really great model for ways that other studios and talleres can work together um, on a, a, you know, on a per project basis. And, you know, I'd, just to share sort of from our experience as a, as a member of the Consejo, you know, we, we don't get to see, um, you know, Sandra and Pepe and Nitsa um, all the time, but I, I still feel um, a very, you know, strong connection uh, between the groups when we come together and, and we do get to do this work collaboratively and like, you know, needs us making this great suggestion that's so timely and so important. Um, and so it's this sort of um, ability to come together around an issue or to honor people uh, like our one of the previous uh, portfolios did. Um, I, I think that this is the kind of uh, a way that others can look to um, start to build and, and create community around mm -hmm. them or around printmaking. And uh, I think definitely agree with uh, this group. And, you know, it's not super explicit in the mission, but I think it, it is very present, our, um, uh, our focus on, on social justice through the artwork that is created. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Um, there's no limit as to how you can uh, meet up and, uh, and connect with other people and create um, groups, community, um, community groups, art related, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Tanda, there isn't a question, but I saw Melanie's um, hand raised earlier. Okay. Melanie, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I just wanted to um, answer, I guess, the first question you're saying about what role the Consejo has. So, for example, um, you know, Dignidad Rebelde is part of Consejo, but it actually was preceded by another group there, Tupac Amaru, and I know that Jesus and Fabiana really kind of came knocking on the door of the Consejo saying, hey, we want to be part of this. And they were young, you know, like this. So the Dignidad Revelt is in its 14th year. So this is before we even existed. This, you know, for a long time, we used to say, oh, we're the, you know, in the in the baby part of the group. We can't say that anymore. <laughs> we're getting up there. But, um, you know, in, in reflecting over the years, um, being kind of, um, on the younger spectrum, I guess, in terms of our experience, um, we have been able to learn so much just by being around folks. And, and you know, the funny thing is, like, when I, I think about it, I'm like, there's literal consejos that, you know, I remember walking with Nitsa, we were like walking by a park, and she's like breaking down all these lessons, like, make sure you do this, you know, learn from what I've already gone through in life. You know? And those lessons stayed, you know, I, I think about it all the time. This is a conversation that happened years ago, and I don't even know if Nitsa remembers, but especially, you know, being a female printmaker, which, you know, the, the, those of us, the mujeres, we know we're few and far between and we need to make more space for the younger generations Yes, um, because it is a male dominated practice, you know, across yep. all of the different kinds of printmaking. Yep. And so that meant a lot to me, you know, just as an example of what I'm saying in terms of what happens in the exchange and relationship of the space that there's like the very, like, I can think of Juan facilitating a relief printmaking um, session when we were in South Bend and I had never I'm not formally trained as a printmaker so I was super excited I was like I've never done a linoleum cut you know there's the very concrete like material practices but then there's all of these other um, ways that we gain wisdom and knowledge and I when I think of the larger arc of history and I think of you know the Leopoldo Mendes is and you know the Grafica Popular there's such a continuity and um, a sense of relationship right because there's real concrete relationships that people have had with these artists and it just feels like such a beautiful um, network to be part of that we're like in this web in this tradition of socially engaged printmaking that is trying to do better for our people right let's say that in a big umbrella term mm -hmm. and so to me that that is one of the things that we get from being part of consejo you know even in the hard times like we've had to kind of take steps back like we had to deal with um you know, I had serious health issues. And then, you know, once I was like feeling better, then we had a big issue with like potential eviction. So like even knowing that we are still part of that co cohesive network, even when we've had to kind of like take a step back, like it is that sense of history, that sense of relationship and connection and mutual support that to me makes Consejo special. Great, that's great. Wonderful. Thank you, Melanie. Well, we're wrapping up to 5.30. I um, want to thank every one of you to, uh, for coming today and being part of this uh, Prince Summit this year. Uh, so we conclude the program with much gratitude. We thank our- Thank you. We grant thank our presenter so and our facilitators throughout the day and each of the members of the Consejo for joining us. For some it's already evening and it's not an easy task to bring all of you together and doing so much more in twice in, within one month. So, you know, the, the pros of the virtual platform. Um, so I want to direct the audience to the Perro Mundo exhibition and the Prince Summit brochure that are both on our website and we also extend our gratitude to you, our audience, for joining us today, day one of the three-day Prince Summit. 
as we wrap up our first day, I wanna thank all of you for your participation and your patience as we navigate through the links, the kinks, and the back end of the Zoom world. I hope you found today's program enriching, inspiring, and learned some new things that you can apply to your own practice. We have a great uh, group of artists coming tomorrow, one of which, one of which is Marianne Sadowski, who will be leading a demonstration. Uh, we'll also have Yvette Pino uh, from joining us from Wisconsin, uh, who's part of the Veteran Print Project. And, and we will also have two skill building workshops and a few round tables, one of which is uh, the student critiques. Uh, and you, if you are participating in the student critiques, you should have received a specific link to attend that, uh, the, that, that portion. Um, please use the, again, please use the link sent in the email with the subject line March 11 Print Summit link to access tomorrow's program. There are also individual links to access the roundtables. We will be monitoring our info um, email address, info at self -help graphics, if there are any questions. So that's being monitored on a constant basis. And finally, self -help graphics relies on the generous support of our community to ensure programs like the Print Summit can be as low, as low cost and accessible as possible. Thank you to all who have donated as part of the registration process. And remember, you can donate at selfhelpgraphics.com or by texting SHG to 41444. Please also save the date for our annual print fair in the month of June, which will include workshops, demonstrations, and the release of the new prints. Um, uh, of, of the new prints. Thank you again, and we will see you tomorrow morning.